Engineer775 here. I want to share some ideas on bug out vehicles. This might not be your choice of bug out vehicles. Um, there are a lot of strategies and this is one that has been taken with this vehicle and uh, that's to get an old school 1965 Chevy with a six cylinder and uh, upgrade a few things on it to make it uh, more drivable um, and uh, but still it's you know carbureted very simple um, doesn't take uh, much skill to keep this thing running and uh, I've done a few things to it to uh, keep it going and one of the things that has been done to this is put a set of disc brakes on the front uh, power steering's been added I'm going to show you that also a uh, Reese hitch has been added to the truck again uh, disc brakes got a new Master cylinder here and has front really nice disc brakes on it. I have this proportional control valve on here to um, basically make sure you have enough pressure, uh, um, more fluid flow to the front, and uh, kind of balance it out with the rear. Obviously, your stopping powers and the and your front brakes. You don't want to be locking up your back brakes. So this is how it's done. Um, can't really tell, but had to cut out the fender wall to get the uh, power steering pump on and. Uh, had to go with a smaller air cleaner because the, the original wouldn't fit with that new uh, master cylinder in there. So it's old school, old school Chevy 1965, six cylinder. Uh, one of the concerns is EMP proofing this and the approach that we're taking is, as you can see, it has an alternator and you're saying, ooh, that's not good. Um, no, it's not, but you can have a couple of those kicking around in your Faraday cages and take about five minutes tops to, if that does fail, to replace an alternator. And so that's really the approach. We could go back with an old generator and an external voltage regulator, which is what this truck had. You can see on the fender. Well, well, I don't probably not. It's pretty dark here, but um, that's where it went. The external voltage regulator. But anyway, if you have the ability to store away an alternator and Maybe you want to throw coil and always have extra plugs and uh, points condenser on the, uh, you know, stored away just in case. So anyway, this is an approach to modernize an old truck by putting uh, front disc brakes on it real nice. But be careful, they're not, obviously don't have anti-lock. And so if you're not used to, if you get used to driving and obviously modern vehicle and you get into this you you just have to get used to um, the brakes because if you apply the pressure you can in an anti-lock brakes you're uh, you're you're, uh, you're off the road <laughs> and this has uh, again the power steering makes it really nice added a front sway bar to this so it handles a lot better so you've got a sway bar under under here and so just drivability the truck drives pretty nice right now manual choke and I guess that's about it and uh, it would take me about 20 minutes to get this thing running on wood now that's just using my gasifier pulling this truck up to it so uh, it's comparable to the size of my engine so I have no no doubt it'll run nicely on wood we're not sure if we're going to do that that is uh, but that is an option and that's to put a gasifier in the back of that to make this a uh, Pretty cool old bug out vehicle that could run off of wood gas. But for now, we're just uh, running gasoline, storing gasoline, and uh, I'm actually storing some Avgas 100LL to, to run this vehicle. And uh, it's got a little more lead than the modern gases. Also, we stay away from any ethanol and just run 100% uh, gasoline or Avgas for this vehicle so all right um i guess that's about it on the 65 chevy bug out vehicle drives real nice again it's you know it's it's uh it's not four wheel drive of course so but if you wanted something to get you around in style um it's a nice truck it's a nice looking truck drives nice with the disc brakes again if you're going to upgrade just be careful uh, if you haven't uh <laughs> You haven't uh, driven an old vehicle with disc brakes with no anti-lock in a while. You just got to get used to it. It's no big deal. But uh, anyhow, that's kind of why this thing's in the shop. 
because uh, a buddy of mine had he'd taken a truck and there was a dog in the road and long story short went off the road because the locked the front end up and so we had it in here to repaint the hood and uh, it didn't do any just did a lot of paint damage wires were just tore this whole the cowl up the hood the fender and so we just got that uh, repainted it's dirty because I've been out driving it just testing and working on the brake so did a few things got the vacuum advance working better brakes adjusted that proportional control I did not put this in somebody else did and they should be slapped they put uh, this proportional control valve in upside down causing the brake system to build pressure and apply the brakes without you applying them so that was not cool so I don't think we'll be going back there um, so anyway I flipped that around did some adjusting you see there's an increase and decrease knob here I had to bleed the front brakes each time and uh, the brakes feel great now not a problem stopping this truck and so there you have it different type of uh, different approach to a bug out vehicle but it's a cool old truck and uh, I guess that's all um, Reese hitch, power steering, disc brakes, does have an alternator, so it has some modern things on it, uh, brake controller, and um, putting that a few things away in a Faraday cage would allow this thing to keep running forever as long as you have fuel, and if you don't have fuel, we could easily gasify this truck, putting a wood gas fire in the back uh, of the truck. And similar to what I did with my Ford, is just, I uh, hate to do it, but uh, these are replaceable, they bolt in, so I, I'd make a special insert here with a boot, and, and basically come in here and probably cut a hole and just uh, ring, bring the hose down through. I hate running the hoses up over the cabs, I think it looks pretty bad, but these you can get these panels in and out and uh, make them a nice rubber boot and uh, put the wood gas line up under the truck and bring it to the carburetor so I guess that I guess that is it folks and uh, uh, the only thing that's missing is a gun rack I think uh, <laughs> okay appreciate any comments on bug out vehicles I, like I said I really haven't done a, vehicle, a video on bug out vehicles but uh, this is one attempt at one so Hope you enjoy it. There we got it running. It's cold. Nice to have that manual choke. Just adjusting it here. Got a nice set of gauges. Most important is keep drying that temperature. Low pressure. What the alternator is putting out. So we're doing good. Don't you love these old trucks? The seats in really nice condition. Got to do a few things. It's darn door guides are messed up but anyway I'll let this baby warm up Here we go old school bug out vehicle let's go for a drive the old bug out vehicle for a ride the only thing I Needs to be added. It needs a good set of shocks. That's one thing this thing needs. But it's uh, still fun to drive the old three on the tree, non synchronized. Trains <laughs> shifting the transmission, that is. I'm going to have to definitely wash it. It's been raining pretty hard. Baxter racing me down the driveway. BOV and the Chevy BOV. Sup, dog? This is where he bites the tires. Oh, yeah. Like clockwork. Way 
car definitely helps. I've been working on the brakes all day yesterday. We got brakes and they are working nicely. And the backs are not locking up like they were. Gotta love this thing. Oh yeah, good old truck. All right folks, I'm curious as to your comments, what you think about bug out vehicles. What would be your bug out vehicle in a raw situation in difficult times? And uh, look forward to your comments and your strategies on uh, what you would do to a vehicle. Would you choose a modern vehicle and be able to replace parts that fail? Would you choose an old school vehicle like this? Would you find something in between? Uh, would you go with a diesel? Uh, maybe an older non-aspirated diesel and uh, go that route. And be able to make your own fuel and so diesel's got a, is a great option hard to find an old diesel that's any an old old diesel that's that's good so maybe you're in the 80s depending on what kind of vehicle you have maybe you want a 60s maybe an 80s diesel is the best way to go for you um, or give me your ideas on alternative fuels you know, we could do Propane or tri fuel conversions, uh, carburetor kits, gas, propane, natural gas. Um, there's always a gasification as an option on a gas vehicle, not on a diesel. And, uh, and then, of course, your diesel. So, would you buy a brand new vehicle and have extra parts? And if you're a good enough mechanic, do you think you could keep it going and during after an EMP? Or, uh, I'm just curious as to your strategy. I got a lot of opinions about it, but. I want to hear what you got to say about it so uh, one thing is just cool driving an old truck so anyway appreciate you watching thanks for your comments take care so what's it gonna be BOV uh, got the old <laughs> reliable wood gas truck and I've got the my very reliable um, 5.8 throttle body. Throttle body I think is easier to gasify than uh, a more modern fuel injection. So that's an option. I've got the, the TDI, which you've seen uh, just having a diesel car front wheel drive. Um, this car, you know, well, I've had a lot of Volkswagen front wheel drive cars. They're amazing in terms of where they can go. Um, I've driven uh, this on every trail on my property. <laughs> so front wheel drive car is a, another option. Diesel is a great option. An older diesel, even better, with mechanical fuel injection, uh, just a simplified uh, motor, easy to work on. And uh, in the 65 Chevy we've just gone over, or maybe a more modern vehicle, the, you know, a diesel truck. It gives you some options there, but you got to be a pretty darn good mechanic to be able to replace everything that f would fail on that. And uh, where the average shade tree mechanic, farmer mechanic like myself could keep that going or that's so a 62 or 65 and then uh, you know you might be good good enough mechanic to work on a diesel car um, old Mercedes 300 or some old Volkswagens, Volkswagen trucks another great option or maybe you want to go the gas route because you can run propane gas wood gas and with a bigger stouter more you know that's a one ton uh, crew cab haul haul a lot more so there's trade-offs I can't haul a lot in that truck but this truck four-wheel drive one time pulling a trailer I can move a lot of stuff including my family and anything that I have to have with me the 65 Chevy a lot of options now that it's uh, more drivable with the disc brakes power steering and uh, tra uh, Reese Hitch with brake control so it's a nice truck, but it's still, it's two-wheel drive. Can't carry a lot. Definitely can't carry a lot of people. Um, there's a car. I can carry more in that car than I can in that truck. And with the size of that trunk and four-seater, four-door, and front-wheel drive, 
I'll put that car up against that truck any day because um, I'll get a lot more places with that car than I will with that truck. Uh, that should bring some comments. And then uh, just having a you know more modern four-wheel drive diesel truck with room, can pull, can tow. You better be good at fixing stuff. So I don't lean towards my F-250 as, a, as my bug out vehicle. And I'd lean more towards the old F-350 gasified or propane conversion. And uh, you know this old truck's really my prototype um, so that I can basically take vehicles like the Chevy and convert them to wood gas for other people if they're interested. So it's a toss up. Uh, so this is just to give you some ideas, some thoughts on bug out vehicles. I'm not starting a used car lot. This is just kind of what's happening as I've been prepping and finding uh, vehicles very cheap. Had to do some work to make them run. Um, so um, I guess that's it. Uh, I'm looking forward to your comments on this one. I really am. <laughs> Take care. Thanks for watching. Oh yeah, I forgot to include something on bug out vehicle strategies. It's in pulling a trailer. Uh, I got my small straight pull. Love that trailer. I've moved a lot of things with that. My brother gave that to me. And bless him for that. That's a awesome, awesome little trailer. I've moved a lot of things. And generators and just on and on. But but the gooseneck trailer I use for everything on the farm and this can haul obviously a lot more but you got to be able to pull it and I've got two trucks that can so again this goes back to my versatile green simple to work on F-350 older 90s version truck that can pull the gooseneck without a problem versus any of the old school trucks are never going to be able to do this um, and so you're stuck with a straight pull trailer which uh, limited capacity compared to pulling pulling something like a 22 foot gooseneck trailer with a lot of equipment. If you had to bug out and you had to get and you had time and you had to get to some other location, you need to haul as much critical components as you need to. This is my option. I can load generators and fuel and equipment and really load this thing up um, seven tons worth. Plus what I can fit in the back of the truck and, and head out. So anyway, just want to talk about trailer options and bugging out. That also might determine what kind of bug out vehicle that you're going to use. Alright, that's enough on this video.